Hey everyone, in this episode, we're gonna go over how to dig through frost with an excavator. Check this out. Hey everyone, so today we're at our Minnesota Sandbox location. Now we get a lot of questions uh, from people about us uh, running year round and then also how we deal with frost. Um, as most excavators know, uh, there's a reason there's not a lot of construction equipment running in the winter times in the Midwest or anywhere in the northern climate. It's because frost is really tough on a machine. Uh, however, with that said, there's certain times you're just going to have to dig through it. So what I thought today I'd cover, kind of show you what we do on our sites. Now, there's two versions of what I'm going to show you. Now, we dig, you know, t probably different than a, a general contractor going out on a new job site. We dig a lot in the same areas. We typically tarp our areas. So if you look over here, you'll see we've got an insulated blue tarp that's on the ground that we use. It's about, uh, I think, 20 feet, 24 feet long, about 12 feet wide. Uh, you'll be surprised. Just covering just a little bit of cover on ground, it'll keep the heat in, and it doesn't let the cold kind of go through down into the soil. So if you know you're going to be digging the area, just putting a tarp over it, uh, and again, these are just have a little bit of insulation in them, uh, really will help, and I'll show you that later. Uh, but I'm also going to show an area that is not been tarped. So I've already started over here where I've gotten down probably about a foot. Now, frost levels. We are in Minnesota. We've actually, today's sunny and beautiful. It's probably about 20, around 20 degrees today. We have been, we've come off an extremely cold week. It was uh, negative nine air temperature. It was like a wind chill of negative 28 uh, earlier this week. So we've had a uh, really hard uh, freeze this week. So I'm guessing we typically about six feet is what a uh, typical frost line in Minnesota is in a normal winter, I'd say five to six feet. Uh, but it you know, can be deeper or shallower. So I'm gonna go through kind of how we deal with the frost here going through this one area. So let me get in the machine and I'll show you. Okay, so today we're using a uh, Komatsu PC210. Now for ripping frost, you know, a couple different tools. Uh, typically you'll see a ripper uh, that's you know, just a single tooth. So a dozer, you'll see dozers with rippers on the back of them. Uh, even excavators, you can get a ripper tooth uh, that is just one single tooth. Uh, we don't have a quick attach on here on our excavator, so it's tough because you have to, it's not easy to change them out. So we, you can just use a dirt bucket. We have a standard bucket. Obviously, you need teeth. You would not be able to do this with a sand bucket. Uh, but, you know, essentially, you're just trying to kind of scrape through that one area to get the frost. Now, you know, it seems obvious, but some people we have out here just understand the concept of frost. It starts from the top, works down deeper. You know, the cold temps keep going down and down and down, but that's where you hit below that frost line, it's gonna be soft and you can actually hollow all that out. And then in the spring, it does the opposite. It heats up from the top and comes down where you have the frost layer down low and it works its way back up. It's also interesting in the spring, and maybe we'll do another video on that. That's why you get a lot of pooling with water because it'll melt the top foot or two, but because you still got a hard frost layer down there, that's where you get the flooding. Uh, it will not, doesn't, the water doesn't have anywhere to soak down into because it's sitting on top of a frost layer. It's handy if you have an excavator, and we call it uh, popping some drains, is what we do is we dig through it. Once you pop through and have an area, all that water starts can drain down in, and that's how you can get rid of some of the flooding. Uh, and I may I'll do, again, we'll do a video in the spring. So. Uh, I'm going to show you again, this is the hard area and we're going to see, I'm going to see how this goes. This is, could be a longer process. So I like to do, I try and hollow out instead of, I see a lot of people doing frost where they do a larger area um, and just scrape off. I think the better strategy is to get one bucket width area that you can break all the way through. Because if you can get all the way through, you can hollow it out. Then you've got a place you can put downward pressure. You can actually push down the frost, you can chip off at it. Right now, just scraping the top, it's dealing with the solid surface underneath. It's kind of like concrete, just breaking through it. You don't have, it's got something it's sitting on top of, so it's a little bit tougher. If it's hollow down there, the frost was more likely to break through. Now, that's not gonna be ideal if you're trying to do a trench, uh, you know, in a long line, but if you're opening up a larger area. So, with that, with that said, I've already done you know the pre-op. I tell you all these in the beginning. We've already done our pre-op in this machine. We've been running it. Um, we also know our site really well here, so we know we don't have any underground utilities. Um, and I'm not gonna go over the basic controls. There's an excavator 101 video if you wanna know the basic controls. Now, typically just scraping through. So you're using the teeth to basically scrape through 
and I'm going in one spot. It is a slow, tedious process. Now it's a hard, it's and you hear the machine, it rocks around, it's it's a hard process on the machine, on the teeth, everything like that. I do something kind of called, I call it the crisscross method, where I go down, because my teeth will go in one channel, I try and go in the same channel, and then I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna go the other direction. I'm gonna keep going back and forth. Eventually it gets easier the deeper you go. Um, so I'm gonna do that for a few minutes here. Again, we'll try and hopefully speed this up because this takes a good bit of time to break through. I've got one area, I'm gonna flip it, go to the other side and kind of do a crisscross pattern there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna start going the other way and I can start chipping off some of that frost. Now this is where you will see it'll start moving your machine. Typically frost is gonna be easier to break from the underside instead of going down on top. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do is build a little area where I can chip underneath it. Uh, typically too, while we're done with moving the tracks around, especially on the snow, ice, you wanna try and have those tracks in line. Uh, if you're down sideways at all, what happens is your machine, it's already going to slide, but it's even worse. And then you're literally just shovel, uh, shoveling all the snow, dirt, everything into the side of your undercarriage. So as much as possible, you're going to try. It is pretty easy, though, to turn on ice. It just kind of, uh, there's not really much traction there. So the excavator spins a lot easier. I've also, if I really lose traction where I'm sliding, a lot of times I'll take some of this dirt I'm actually getting out and lay some sand right in front of my tracks. That can kind of help for traction. So I'm guessing it looks like I'm about uh, two to three feet down now. Again, I would estimate we probably have five or so feet here, but eventually, see, I'm starting to catch under a lip and I can actually see the back of the machine is starting to pick up. This is where you gotta be really, really careful. So I keep doing this, it's, my machine's gonna fall. I'll try and like that. So you gotta be careful, but that's a good sign. It means you're able to get underneath it. It's actually, we've got a 26 ton excavator here and that's what you see it's picking up my entire back end. Eventually you might have to clear a small pile so you can start seeing in there. So you see, that's a good sign when I'm getting that. Now you have to transition almost to, normally we're pulling the stick in while we're doing that. On a normal uh, scoop, you're pulling the stick in while you're raising. Uh, when you start getting that, you almost have to go opposite. You have to go stick out a little bit and you're just trying to chip off that edge. So right there, I can feel it catching and I'm just scraping that little corner up. And then eventually I just start chipping away at that that and I can start start scraping on that inside a little bit and I'm kind of going down and pushing out with my stick it's a little bit opposite motion of what you'd normally do but it's a lot easier to break frost coming up because you're using all the power of the weight of that excavator And then I'm just scraping the sides off to try and make this hole bigger. So the other thing that uh, Komatsu and well, a lot of the machines have a power boost. So if I try and curl it right here, I'm all the way over. If I push this left on top, you can see my machine actually gives a little bit more power. It's a boost um, to the hydraulic. So. Sometimes if I'm breaking through, I don't want to use it every single time, but it is handy because it really powers through. So the good reason, again, why I'm going in one single hole, and as you can see, uh, I'm using this corner tooth now. 
the machine again with five teeth this is why a ripper is really effective because it's putting all 26 tons of that machine on one point pounds per square inch it's a lot on this machine i've got five teeth so i'm spreading that across five eventually you get to the point where you can just use a corner tooth and that's kind of what you'll see i'm doing on the right side here is i'm breaking through my ridges with just that right tooth it's, it's a lot more effective and that's kind of why eventually we'll get through the entire thing here and I'll be able to go at just the corners and start chipping away to make it bigger. So you can see I'm getting down. I'm deep enough now. I'm probably five or so feet. Now it's just trying to widen this hole out. See how strong that is, holding the whole machine. Through the frost layer, I gotta be careful a little bit on the back side of my uh, bucket here, all the pins and hydraulics there. But again, now that I've got it, what I'll be trying to do is clear out an area where I can now start chipping away and make this bigger. But you'll see how soft the sand is I'm bringing out now. And then this is where we talk about using that tooth to just start, first of all, I try and build a little bit of a cavity down underneath there. That allows a space to be able to push pressure on, to push down. Now again, this depends what you're digging for. Um, you know, it doesn't, we're for training purposes, and I'm not trying to go to a certain depth here. So you don't wanna obviously over excavate, but you'll see how, I mean, I got that arm all the way down. going to try and make it a little bit bigger and this is where just scraping that side you see how easily if you can see tough to see with the sun there but that one tooth is going it's acting like a ripper it is going a lot easier through it I'll go back to the other side and try and tear through that one So then I'm just using those, see how I'm just breaking through those chunks. I've got a place for that material to fall and I'm just using that corner tooth. And you'll see how much easier it's breaking through that. Okay, so that was digging through regular frost, uh, no treatment on the ground. You know, for a contractor going out, you know, you probably are gonna heat the ground. You can do a lot of different treatments whether you put a tent over the area there's heated mats things like that um, but i just want to show you how you can get through it now if you look i mean again we've got a good probably five feet but what you'll see uh when i look down there you'll see there's actually a little bit of a cavern that's what i was trying to build that opening underneath because then i can put downward pressure and it's a lot easier to break it up now that i have that entry hole done it would be a lot easier to keep going to make this a longer trench or whatnot uh, but it's still a, a beats down the machine so come up here and look at that so just show, I mean, look even over on this side over here, you see how you, you can see a solid frost layer. Now we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna try and we'll do this a uh, quicker one, but I'll show you. We've just got a little insulated tarp. And again, it was real, I haven't even dug in this area in a, like a week, it was really cold, but um, let's see what it's like digging on that other area. I just removed a little bit of the tarp over here and we'll try and just dig a, pop a little bit of a hole there. You can already see my it's going through a lot easier. You see how that just broke up really easily. See how much easier that was uh, just having a tarp so 
we'll park it there. Just wanted to show. So again, uh, that you saw how long it took on a ground that's not been treated or covered or anything like that. Uh, that was 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, this took me less than five. Just by having, you see, this is just a, uh, it's a concrete curing blanket is what we use. Um, they have a lot of different insulated tarps that are out there or these curing blankets, but we got it at our local hardware store, uh, but you can get them online too. Uh, I find it doesn't have to be that thick. This is, you'll see, this is not, there is an insulation there, but it's not huge. Uh, but you'll see the same effect. I've got the frost there. It's not nearly as deep as it was over there, and it was just a lot easier to break through. Okay, everyone, so that's how we break through frost here at our site. Uh, I'm curious to hear from operators out there, especially guys that run in the winter, uh, give any tips or tricks that you might have learned. Uh, as I claim in all my videos, I think I learned more from you guys commenting. Uh, so give us some other ideas on things you can do. Again, I appreciate you guys watching this episode. We'll see you on the next one.